With her skeleton framing covered by a coating of plates, the Orient Liner begins to show her size, overhanging every worker's life in town and yard, as she stretches her 600 odd feet down towards the water in which she will ultimately spend her days. All day long, a never ending procession of workers comes on and off the ship. Under the bilge keeling, more and more shores are needed to support the ever growing weight as ton after ton of steel comes down from the shops. High above along her sides, the thunder of a hundred squads shatter the air. Royals and five eighths men, each with their fires and catch lads, paid by the hundred rivets. This time next year, this blooming ship will have seen more blooming sight of the world than ever I'm likely to. Farm trees and natives, just like you'd see on the pictures. going on in myself, queer to think that women will be walking about here just in silk dresses and chaps in natty suits trying to keep going. Don't suppose they think of the block that ate the blinking rivet. Must be getting pretty near the buzzer. Deep down in the bowels will be housed the high pressure twin screw single reduction geared turbines, designed to give 24,000 shaft horsepower and a speed of 21 and a half knots. Across the way, they are assembling the six water tube boilers. Are you coming to the club tonight, Joe? No, unless you want to go to the club tonight. In every bay of the machine shops and in the erecting pits, some part of the turbines is being made. Back on the ship, a tail shaft for coupling up with the propellers is manoeuvred down into the shaft tunnel. How is Jackson doing? Oh, he's doing fine. Above decks, the superstructure is well advanced. Huge spaces for sports and games, decks for walking, reading and sunbathing, open air swimming pools and dance floors must be provided for the tropical voyages which will form the greater part of 697's life. But scaffolding still covers the stern as she sits securely above the water. And all the time, as she grows higher and bigger, the life of the town goes on. Every mouth being fed, every body being clothed by the work of the men in the yard. Over the shops and the pubs, over the cinemas and the market, towers the bulk of 697, who, in her growth, has become almost part of the town.
Soon she'll be ready for the propeller. They are being made down south of London, alongside others for the fastest and largest ship in the world. yard zero hour approaches. The ways are greased so that she'll slide smoothly and gracefully into the water. While up on the decks, last rivets are being driven, last plates are being fixed, preliminary painting completed and everything is set for the launch. and wedges must be driven out so that the 13,000 tons will remain just held by the triggers. Ah, the tide's about turning now. It should be fine in the morning. Steady with those end blocks. They should be moving too soon. Oh, it's getting lively now. With the windows, I think the rain will keep up. Oh, you hear that voice? Aye, it should go down as nice as nine foot. Encounter some rivets. Thirteen thousand tons on the launching ways. Twenty-four thousand tons in all when she's finished. Ready to be launched by wireless from Australia by His Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester. Twelve thousand miles in all, Sydney. Will you try another line? I'm not getting you too well. That's better. Right here now, Sydney. They'll be getting all set up there now. It'll be a fine sight. You know the ceremony is being relayed on the Empire and all the regional programs, so all the busy housewives will be able to listen in. Well, Sydney, they'll be about ready up there now. It's just two minutes to eleven here. Are you all okay? Okay. Cheerio, Sydney, for the time being. We'll go right over to the Duke now.
before performing the act of magic which will cause this beautiful ship to take the water so many miles away, I send a greeting to my countrymen at Darrow and Furnish, who are so fortunate as to be present at her launching. As her sponsor, I offer to the youngest daughter of the family my congratulations on her birthday. And I wish her many happy returns on our voyages between England and Australia. I name you Iran. Good fortune attend you always. <laughs>